all charges dropped. Former Governor Oju Zokalu is now a free man because the Supreme Court nullified a 12-year conviction. And 2023 and the Igbo presidency, Ohane Zendibo has vowed to go all out for the actualization of an Igbo president. This is Plus Politics and I am Felicity Ezewike. You're welcome to the program. The Supreme Court has nullified the conviction of a former Abia State Governor, Oji Uzokalu, who had been jailed for corruption. Now, delivering judgment to seven man member panel of the Apex Court in a unanimous decision set aside the judgment of Justice Mohammed Idris of the Federal High Court on the ground that Mr. Idris was already a Justice of the Court of Appeal as at the time he delivered the judgment. Justice Idris had, on December 5, 2019, sentenced the former governor to 12 years in prison, and Ude Dogo, who was the director of finance and accounts at the Abbey State House, Government House during uh, Mr. Kalu's tenure, was sentenced to 10 years in prison. Joining us in the studio to discuss this is legal practitioner Liboris Oshoma. Thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure. And we'll be joined via telephone by Debo. Adeniro, Executive Chairman, Coalition Against Corrupt Leaders. Thank you very much for joining us, Debo. Thank you very much. I corrected you the other time. Our organization is Center for Anti-Corruption and Open De Leadership, CACOL. CACOL, okay. I apologize yeah. for the mix-up. Thank you for your time again. That's right. Okay. All right, let's start. Oji Zokalu, others were convicted in December, and now the court has... Um, released him, he's a free man. Make us understand what played out. Um, it's, it's a sad one for, um, for all of us, um, the judiciary, lawyers, you know, Nigerians, and um, you, you know, uh, one had expected that um, with um, the fight against corruption that um, you know, some of these um, technical issues you know, would be laid to rest and, uh, but there are some technical issues that goes to the roots of the powers of the courts. And then uh, once those issues are raised, and in, in, in law we call it the jurisdiction of the court. And so once those issues are raised, you cannot um, sweep them under the carpet. The law cannot close its eyes to it. I see where the mistake actually came from is that uh, we are not a nation that pays attention to details. You know, so in our attempt to fast track the administration of criminal uh, justice, uh, dispensation of criminal justice. Um, we also amend, we amended our laws, but we failed to realize the fact that the Constitution is the ground norm. And so, if you are amending any law, you also need to be sure that no section of that law is, um, is uh, conflicting with the provisions of the Constitution. Once that happens, even if somebody is convicted on the basis of that law, if it gets upstairs, the courts might look at it and will just, um, you know, throw that um, conviction, you know, through the window. And then, on this case, this matter is very peculiar in the sense that it is the defense that actually asked for the matter to be concluded on the ground that the matter had stayed for too long. And now, at the tail end of um, judgment in the matter, a judge that was hearing the matter was elevated. And we all know that once a judge is elevated and the matter is assigned to another judge, it will start de novo. And so on the basis of section 269, subsection, 369, subsection 7 of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, defense, you know, applied to the presiding judge to say, allow this judge con continue this matter. It is the same defense that got to the court of, uh, Supreme Court to say, look, this judge that concluded the matter does not have the powers to conclude the matter on the ground that if you look at section 253 of the constitution it says that a judge it defines a judge of the high court as a, uh, it defines a sitting judge of the high court and so not being a sitting judge of the high court it does not have power to conclude a matter and so to that extent there is a conflict between section 253 
and section three of the constitution and section 369 subsection 7 of the administration of criminal justice act and so that you know those actions taken amounts to a nullity and so the supreme court so heard that the actions amounted to a nullity uh, and that so the courts should the matter should go back you know to court of first instance and, and be rehad and only god knows how long that will take let's 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 um, bring uh, mr adeniro into the conversation the supreme court's position that the constitution does not permit a judge um, elevated to a higher court as uh, mr oshoma has explained to return to a lower court to conclude a part head case must be a known fact. So shouldn't Justice Mohammed Idris have known that there was such a provision uh, before he went ahead to take on that case? Thank you very much. Um, I believe that uh, Judge, uh, I mean, Justice uh, Idris knew what he was doing. And I believe that he relied on the provision of uh, administration of criminal justice acts uh, to go back to the High Court to, I mean, to conclude in that um, adjudication. Um, lawyers know how they maneuver their ways when it comes to technicalities. And for some of us who are non-lawyers, we what we are looking for is what we believe is justice to uh the member of the public that are members of the public that are suffering the jeopardy of maladministration of some of our former leaders um what we believe is that from high courts a litigant will go to a court of appeal before supreme court what we know is that the case is supposed to be the court of appeal before the Supreme Court came in. I wouldn't know how these lawyers, you know, there are usually three lawyers in, uh, in any case, the prosecutor, the defendant, and the uh, justice or judge sitting at the higher table. They knew exactly what they are doing, but we don't want to be taken through that rigors. What we want is justice. This case has not been properly heard at the Supreme Court. We know that uh, the former governor has amassed so much wealth. We know that he cannot defend the sources of resources with which he acquired these um, properties and all what he had. We also know that the High Court examined every detail of information provided as evidence, and uh, they listened to the, 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 the presentation of uh, the witnesses before they came to that conclusion that the man deserved to go to jail. And um, if judges or the judiciary generally will base their actions on technicalities. It will continue to give the corrupt leaders the leverage to escape the long hands of the law. Um, Nigerians are waiting to see EFCC refiling the case since the man is not ac acquitted. We believe that um, the, the, the grant upon which he was released is um, shaky. All right. And let's... that all the corrections, all the errors that were committed in the earlier trial all will right. be corrected during the retrial. All right. And let, let we me... believe that justice will still be done. All right. Um, the Supreme Court did not um, acquit him of any charges. Exactly. Let's 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 I begin what my friend, with. Um, um, Debo was um, talking about. Okay, um, but as if, um, let, let's know. look at it. I, I want to look at it from because sometimes it's always better for the layman who watches understand some of these technicalities yeah. um, that um, give rise to such judgment. So my question would be. Someone already sentenced and already serving time is acquitted, it's discharged, his case is thrown away, not because there was the charges weren't proved, 
not because there were no um, evidence against him. It was on a technicality. Please help us understand what the implications are for the justice system. You see, law regulates society. And that is why the Constitution says, even if I catch you red-handed, that the law still presumes you're innocent. Until the onus is on me that caught you to prove, not just prove, prove beyond reasonable doubt. That has been done. Yeah, then I'm coming, I'm laying a foundation. You asked me a very technical question. I need to answer technically so that. So it is not in my place. Left to me, I'll say all this, you know, anybody that's accused, just lock him behind the bar and throw the key away. But there are provisions in the law on how these things should be done. In, in like manner, there, is, there are provisions on who a judge is. And if you look at section 253 of the Constitution, it says the federal high court shall be duly constituted if it consists of at least one judge of the courts. That is where the problem is, of the courts. But in trying to fast track the dispensation of justice, section 269, subsection 7, now of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act now says that if a judge is elevated to the court of appeal and that that judge can still hear part hard matters because the problem is that once you are elevated, the matter is reassigned and any judge that is coming to hear that matter will start afresh. And so to avoid all of those delays, the Administration of Criminal Justice Act empower judges who are elevated to continue to hear those cases. But the mistake we made was the fact that we forgot that that piece of legislation ought not to be in the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, but in the Constitution. So if that provision had been a proviso to Section 253 of the Constitution, there wouldn't have been any problem. But being a provision of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, which is a law that is subservient to the Constitution, and we all know that Section 1, Subsection 3 says, if any law is in conflict with the Constitution, that law shall be null and void to the extent of its consistency. An ordinary so, man. It is on this basis that the court looked at can you, in all honesty, looking at the provisions of section 253, say that Justice Idris, as at the time he delivered this judgment, was a judge of the court of the high courts? Yes, you've explained that, the that, technicality. That is the technicality. Okay. And so that's why I am saying that what we should do moving forward is when we enact laws. There should be a team, a body, that should sit down when we are enacting laws, when you draft bills. There should be a body that should sit down, clause by clause, look at those sections in that bill, and find out anyone that is in conflict with any provisions of the Constitution. But from, so from, that the, from, the, street, from the street corner, this will be interpreted as injustice because yeah, the court that is the highest court that is supposed to be the com the last hope of the common man is seen to have given a judgment not on the basis of the evidence but no, on no, a no, technicality no, no. L let's look at it this way the foundation of any court is the powers of the court we call it jurisdiction the court must first and foremost if, for example, I challenge the powers of the court, the court will assume power to check if they have powers. The moment the court discover that they do not have powers to look into that matter, the court will immediately remove their hand because anything you do subsequently, when it goes upstairs, the court will say, the higher court will say, you took decisions when you have no powers to take such decisions. Let's bring it to office management. It's like you're sitting on a desk as an executive director and you took decisions that are way above your powers, that are decisions left to the board to take. And the matter gets to the board, the board says, well, as beautiful and as lovely as these decisions are, they are travias your powers. And so to the extent of those, they, they become nullity. And so for me, what I think we should, these are lessons to be learned. I feel very bad, I feel very sad that after 12 years, with a slip, we just missed it. 
And but then, what are the takeaways for me? There are takeaways. The takeaways are the fact that, yes, from now on, if we are enacting a bill, it shouldn't just be for the purpose of you know fast tracking you know criminal justice system. We should also look. Oh, what are these beautiful provisions? Are there any way they can be impeded by the Constitution? If there are such lacunas, why don't we move those laws to the realm of the Constitution so they become the ground norm? So if it was the ground norm that once a judge, even if elevated, he should continue to sit, that will not become a, a jurisdictional issue. All right, let, let's bring Mr. Deniro back into the conversation. Um, you've heard all that Mr. Um, uh, Oshama has said, uh, but, but I want to yes. ask you, from mm. the, he said, the voice of men is the voice of God. Justice should be seen to have been done. Has justice been done for you in this case, aside the technicality? Justice has not been done. All what uh, liberals have been saying is the conspiracy of uh, the judicial officers against the people. Um, the ACJ, the, 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 that is the Administration of Cri Criminal Justice Act, has been promulgated since the days of the last uh, president. That's more than six years ago. And all of these lawyers, all of these lawyers that are pontificating, have always been talking about the fact that a judge that is elevated can come back to conclude in the case he's handling before he was I mean, elevated. The justices of the Supreme Court have always been there, and they are aware that this law is there, is there, and it has what liberals is talking about, maybe a conflict um, point with the Constitution. Why is it that they didn't remove it before this case was heard? I believe that the uh, justices of Supreme Court have some, um, some games up their sleeve because the, the speed with which they had the, the case and uh, dismiss it is uh, so alarming. That, that's that's a weighty we accusation believe, you are dropping. We also believe... If I the accusation, I'm just saying what I suspect. Not I have not accused them of. Um, I say some games. It okay. can be. It can be a way they want the. the I mean, jurisprudence to be tailored. I don't know. Yeah, but I what we have seen from this case is. is that the Supreme Court circumvented the uh, the power of the Court of Appeal. And they heard the case. Let's, let's and they heard the case without looking at the evidence that were provided, without looking at uh, the e evidences given by the witnesses. But they not to hold brief, uh, Mr. Deniro, but not to yes. hold brief for the comments that are being made. Um, yeah. Are you saying that the judges, it's a bit tricky. Are you saying that they should look away from that technicality and uphold the ruling of the court in spite of this um, technicality that has been explained? Well, if you look at cases that uh, justices of Supreme Courts have been handling, any pronouncement that comes out of them is like law. If they saw the conflicts between SEJA and the Constitution, they should know that it's an honest mistake, a mistake that all of them, all of the judicial officers should be uh, should hold themselves responsible for. All and right, they could use their pronouncement to correct that error by saying that the man, based on SEJ, could go back to conclude his uh, assignment. And that was what has happened. All, All right, of let's... these maneuverings will be unnecessary. All right, Mr. Uh, Oshoma it, seems to want to react quickly to what yes, you said. Uh, Go ahead. First and foremost, um, it's um, unfortunate that um, Debo is blowing hot and cold from the same mouth. Um, the issue, I'm not discussing sentiment. I, as pained as I am, I'm discussing law strictly. I don't, I will not join issues with him on the sentimental issues that he's discussing. The Supreme Court cannot. No lawyer will tell you that the Supreme Court can elevate an act of the National Assembly above the provisions of the Constitution. That is a clear no. The Supreme Court also did not look into the conviction, the appeal 
was not on whether the proprietor or otherwise of the conviction. The conviction, if you look at, if you read the judgment of the lower court, it was flawless because the action that were committed by the uh, accused persons were very, very brazen, taking money directly from the coffers of the government. And, and so, but law does not work like that. The law works with procedures. As I am sure also that the Supreme Court justices would have, in all honesty, wanted to uphold the provisions of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act. But, like he said, in every matter there are two sides. You have the prosecutor and you have the defense. And looking at the provisions of the Constitution, vis-a-vis -vis the provisions of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, the Supreme Court hands would have probably been tied to say, well, we can't do anything. I had expected that they would have said, well, go back and in five months conclude this matter. So but there were they options also, the Supreme Court could They have also taken. do not have that powers to give the trial judge or the trial court the time limit with, within which to hear a matter. The way forward should be the National Judicial uh, Commission should take note of this point that since the Supreme Court had said that Section 269, Subsection 7, is in conflict with the provisions of the Constitution. And so what it means, that section is a nullity. If judges are hearing high-profile matters, they should not be, even if you are so much in, desperately want to elevate them, allow them to dispose of those matters, and then you can elevate them. But this action, right. this situation where we elevate judges who are hearing part hard, you know, um, politically exposed matters, it will defeat the end of justice. We should okay. start from there. I need to interject because there are some other areas uh, to this conversation we need to look at, and that's the fact that he was a seventh senator before all of this happened. First off, he was facing trial and he got an elective office. Now he has been, you know, freed up to go and start the trial again. And he has also said that he's getting ready to meet his colleagues at the National it's Assembly. What does the law say about this? Can he go back? Because as it stands, do we call him a convicted, um, uh, somebody that was convicted of a crime? Or do we say he was released? What, I mean, what explanation is there right now? It's unfortunate that that um, as he stands now, that conviction had been nullified. And that so you can no longer call him a convicted man. Okay. And it also is unfortunate there are no provisions in our constitution for somebody who has been convicted for a crime, a seventh senator. What should happen to a seventh senator who has been convicted? All right. and, and so when there are no provisions, what it means is that once you are convicted, he had uh, me, the man, man had appealed and appeals were pending. I can tell you that he probably he were in PDP. He probably would have been, um, his seat would have been declared vacant. But right. being a member of the ruling party, he was left there and then um, maybe. I wish, I wish we had more time. We coming. would explore but, other areas. It's really unfortunate, areas. but we should look at some of our laws and find a way around them. Mr. Really. Mr. Deniro, please, um, in yeah. 30 seconds, your final thoughts on this particular matter. I think the judgment that was handed down by the justices of Supreme Court is like an ambush that has been planned from the time that the, just, uh, the judge of the lower, uh, lower court, uh, of the federal high court, was elevated. Knowing that that judge was handling a very sensitive case, like the case of public exposed person, he could have been left behind to complete that. And I still repeat that all of these lawyers and justices ought to have uh, identified that, um, that uh, conflict Okay, a conflict in provisions of the ACJA and the Constitution, and will have ironed it out before it gets to this emergency. And on this emergency, the Supreme Court justices could have assisted the Nigerian public to iron out things by their pronouncement, knowing that what Nigerians are waiting for is justice. Because all of these public exposed persons. I've taken notes for a ride for so long. All right, and Mr. Like, uh, De Niro. Li Libra said, the judgment of the high court is, um, I mean, cannot be faulted on the, at the level of uh, presentations that were made by the prosecution and the witnesses. So basically, we should work for tomorrow and All right. ensure that justice is not only said to have been done, it should be seen 
to have, have been, been done. done. Thank you very much, Mr. Adeniro, for your thoughts. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, to wrap up quickly, your final thoughts in 30 yes, seconds. Uh, the judges do not just sit down, look at laws, and begin to expunge sections or uphold sections. They decide the propriety or the whys of sections in the law on the basis of matters and argument presented before them. So if these issues were not presented before the Supreme Court, there is no way they would have made a pronouncement on it. So we need to be guided on that. Thank you very much for coming on the program. My pleasure. And thank you for staying with us thus far, but we're not done yet. Conversations concerning Igbo presidency has returned. This is up for discussion next. Stay with us.